is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. And good afternoon, four minutes after the hour, 2.04 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is, it's the Court of Public Opinion, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. And yes, I know we're going to get to the bill here in just a little bit. And they're already, Democrats are already uh, whining and crying and moaning and soiling themselves. What's taking so long? Well, the president, unlike most of you toolboxes are actually, he's reading it. It's 1,150 some odd pages long. And he thought maybe he ought to read it before he signs it. I know that's not something you guys in DC do very often on either side of the aisle. Uh, But in this case, the president thought it might be a good idea to read something before he uh, approves it. So we'll get to that in just a second. My question you know, and, and I've visited this ground before. I remember growing up as a kid, you know, part of the time I lived in Texas, part of the time Oklahoma, back and forth, would visit Dallas and Fort Worth all the time. When did Dallas flip to Beto Blue? When did that happen exactly? Uh, if you haven't heard, the brain trust, the brain trust for um, the city of Dallas has voted to remove the Confederate War Memorial. I'm talking about the big one, that big cojona. I think it's the oldest one down there. The Confederate War Memorial uh, in Dallas Pioneer Park uh, in the cemetery, it's going to be removed. Uh, The Dallas City Council, in their infinite wisdom, voted 11 to 4 last night to take it down. It's supposed to cost around 400 grand. and We got that money laying around, right? It was... uh, put up in Dallas in 1896. And yes, it is the city's oldest public monument. It sits between Dallas City Hall and the convention center. And evidently, a few hypersensitive folks are tossing and turning in their beds, um, making um, more and more appointments with their therapist, uh, trying to medicate themselves um, out of the feeling they have because of the Confederate monument. Good Lord. Uh, The only saving grace here is that the city has to get approval from the Landmark Commission before the memorial can come down. Uh, But the Preservation Dallas, um, they warned the council that the removal from a designated historical area would set a dangerous precedent. Well, you think? Now, look, I'm going to say what everybody else is thinking, all right? You got a handful of these town clowns that all happen to be of color uh, that somehow, someway, um, well, if we get rid of this, it's going to erase forever that that blot on historical Texas. And uh, since slavery has been um, eradicated, these are the last remnants. Oh, shut up. All right. You weren't a slave. Your mom and dad weren't a slave. Your grandparents weren't slaves. What is it? It's like when things are going good. I mean, Texas is a great state. It really is. You know, Dallas is about as liberal as they come. I don't know when that happened. But um, if if you care anything about, I mean, forget the monetary aspect. Supposed to cost 400,000, 450,000, something like that. We're going to take that down because of a couple town clowns that, you know, this is what slavery was. Shut up. You don't know anything about slavery. You weren't there. All right, just get rid of this. Here's a quote. We need to take this down. We don't need to re-envision anything. This is uh, Dallas Councilman Kevin Fielder. Is he a black guy? Uh, I don't know. I'm just going by what he says here. Hello. Hello, we're doing a show over here. Hey. Yeah, okay, well, uh, I do have people working on the show. You just wouldn't know it. Um, Councilman Kevin Fielder, he said that last Wednesday, uh, February 6th, during a briefing session regarding the monument, the city is tasked with a proposal 
to either rework the 65 foot tall it's a big big statue 65 foot tall statue with accurate historic context and information or dismantle the century old monument i guess i got to cut it in sections and then haul it away or something um uh, he's a black guy right okay councilman felder there no other issues your constituents here are concerned about other than a confederate statue I mean, if that's the case, you got a lot of spare time. Maybe, maybe we should find something else for you to do. You know, I'm trying not trying to be ugly here, but I think just about everybody, white, black, Hispanic, short, tall, fat, thin, we've you know we're, we've had a belly full of remember slavery. No, I don't. I wasn't there. Neither was my dad. Neither was my granddad. Neither was his dad. All right. If, if you're looking, if you're struggling for something to be relevant. Uh, like Jesse Jackson and Shabazz and and Sharpton, you know, please do it on your own nickel. Because I, at least the folks I talk to were really say you know, slavery, yeah, nobody wants to start that again. It's kind of a bad deal. Um, taking down monuments, that's not going to change anything. You know, that's basically all you're doing is putting symbolism over substance once again. You know, if you want to help the black community, start piping some money into the inner city. Start rebuilding the infrastructure. Start start rebuilding the schools. Uh, start doing job training programs. Forget the damn monuments. What's wrong with you? Uh, let's go to Robert and Cleburne. Robert, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, Rick. Uh, yeah, I couldn't help but uh, get a little riled up about this thing. And, yes, I'm very disappointed when they go after the flag and the monuments. Seven of my eight great-great-grandfathers wore Confederate gray, and I am very proud of what they did and why they did it. It's not about the flag. It's not about the monuments. It's about us. When I say us, I'm talking about uh, born Southerners who resist tyranny like they have since the British tried to, to take us over and all that kind of stuff. If they break us down, they've breaking down the country. We're the last vestige of any hope in this country to preserve this uh, republic. Well, see, see, Robert, here's the thing. A bunch of politically correct, free-to-be, you-and-me tree huggers, and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but most of them, except for that uh, weak-kneed sister Rawlings, most of them are people of color. Um, they think by, you know, walking point on, let's take down these horrendous monuments, somehow that's going to raise their stock with their constituency. Um, you know, if, if you are so thin skinned, uh, that looking at a part of history, you know, sends you into, uh, the fetal position, uh, under a doctor's care, then you probably should have been there to begin with. Here's the thing, Robert, it doesn't matter how many of your relatives, um, were in the Confederacy. As far as these, these town clowns, these, you know, pot stirrers concerned, Anything having to do with Confederacy automatically, automatically has to do with slavery. All your ancestors were uh, slave uh, slave owners. All your ancestors supported slavery. See, that's, that's the part that they've tried to airbrush out of history. You know, the, there is no Southern pride. Uh, there is no Confederacy uh, that was worth anything. Anybody that wore the gray... Uh, was uh, just as bad as the slave traders on the ships from Africa. Uh, they've tried to, they, bottom line, just like the federal government does with us, you know, these guys, these village idiots uh, disguised as councilmen and other folks, they've tried to airbrush into history if you were a part of the Confederacy, if you wore the gray, if you were in the South, you were as bad as a slave owner. And therefore, anything that has Anything to do with the Confederacy must be abolished, must be airbrushed out of history. You know, it's it's just more mind tripping on uh, people that are too stupid to think for themselves. I mean, it's just that easy. You know, we take down the 65 year old monument. Uh, can we shut up about slavery from now on? No, we won't. It'll just be another uh, another chapter. 17 minutes after the hour, 2.17 the time. (laughs) Man, you can set your watch to it. Get over this slavery nonsense. It's gone. It's been eradicated. 
Well, there's still racism, Rick. Well, you're never going to get rid of racism as long as you have human beings. You can't shout racism down. You can only educate people out of it. Um, yeah, all the weak-kneed sisters on the council, yes, take the statue down. That way we people will know we hate slavery. Yeah, evidently, anything that had anything to do with Confederates, according to some of these village idiots running around here, um, well, if, they, if it had anything to do with Confederates, They were slave lovers. I've already got my first death threat, and it's not even 3 o'clock yet, right? Now, you got to be careful. Yes, Rick, that's correct. Yeah, I already had one angry caller. Angry. Very well put. Wanting to know what time I I get off the air, right? Okay. Um, Something like that, yeah. Something like that. We really can't relay the the message. Uh, Here's the thing. Uh, if If your life is somehow impacted by a statue that was put up in the late 1800s that for whatever reason, if it has anything to do with the South, anything to do with the Confederacy, anything to do with that, it's got to be about slavery. You know, I it just, when are you going to get over it? Okay, how about this? How about all these village idiot and, and, and all these community organizers and all these reverends? How about uh, you sign a piece of paper and say, okay, we'll take this statue down. Now you can shut up about slavery and try to do something good for the black community. You know, instead of rehashing the same old crap uh, that happened a couple hundred years ago. I mean, I'm just sick of it. And I've talked to people of color that are sick of it. You know, it doesn't represent them. Let's go to... But the... the for whatever reason, the Brain Trust, City Council, and the City of Dallas, yeah, they just figure if they keep taping, taking down statues, you'll keep voting for them. Uh, let's go to Richard in South Lake. Richard, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Doing real good, Rick. Love your show. Thank you. Sorry about the sorry about the death threats. Uh, yeah, luck. I've been doing this twenty six <laughs> years. Uh, they're gonna have to get on their horse if they're gonna get, even get even. Yeah, what I wanted to bring up is that, you know, why are we sitting back and letting these politicians take our tax dollars and use them to remove these statues without getting a vote on it? You know, I, 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 don't, want, I don't want the statue to be taken down. It doesn't offend me. Well, look, you know? here's the thing, uh, Richard. They will tell you, well, you're being insensitive on scale with slave owners from hundreds of years ago. Uh, you're not a person of color that has to walk by that statue. You're not a person. Of, I, you know, I, I, I don't. I'm not a black guy. I'm a white guy. But how if I were black? If I were black in 2019 and walked by that Confederate statue, how could that possibly? negatively impact my life how yeah i understand but uh my other thing is that okay if these people want it taken down let them fund do some fundraising selling cakes and things like that and let them raise the money to take them down yeah i mean if it's if it's well here's the thing you've got all these community organizers these village idiots these you know council people that uh yes amen we're you know i'm gonna right the historical wrongs no you're not you know, you can barely, barely put one foot in front of the other. You're not going to right any historical wrong. You know, and I'm sorry, just because you ignore something that happened in history doesn't mean it's permanently removed. It's there. That's why it's called history. You know, grow up here, get over it, and let's move on down the road together and try to get something done. Unfortunately, you have too many of these reverends and these community organizers and village idiots you know they're struggling to remain relevant to you know small pockets here and there groups here and there you know since they come up with this kind of goofy stuff you know on behalf of you and all that came before you we're taking down the statute that makes you feel bad really okay well are you gonna pay that 400 grand to do that yeah, knucklehead. Um, I appreciate the call very much, Richard. Thank you. Let's go to Sean in Dallas. Sean, thank you for waiting. Hi. How are you doing, Mr. Roberts? I'm doing good. I just wanted to first off let you know that I've been listening for a while now. This is my second time I've called you. Uh, I guarantee you there's a whole bunch of good old boys down around here that it back you up 100% if anybody wants to try to get frisky with you. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. When I used to do something called Rick's Top 10, um, where I would name names, addresses, 
convictions of child molesters. And Oh, Lord. And it was good for about three or four death threats a week. But uh, ironically enough, most of the death threats came from their families saying, well, you don't I'll understand. He only molested his niece or his cousin or what. Well, that's even worse. Not only have you... Have you compromised them physically? Now you've taken away their trust. So that didn't tell me anything. Um, Any, he, tell you what, sir. Yeah. Sir, I just, okay, back to the original thing about this Confederate memorial being taken down. Right. I was, I was driving a school bus in Grossbeck, and I got to go out to Confederate Ground State Park down near Mejia. Right. And they had a couple of Civil War cannons. And I was talking with the guys, and they said, yeah, we've taken them out in four days. Take it, I'm sorry, you cut out on me. They've taken them out what? To Fort Hood. Oh, and okay. they were testing them. Two and a half mile range. One of their ammo boxes had a big brass plaque. This gun carriage in 1998 carried Civil War dead. It was the remains from the H.L. Hunley submarine. Oh, wow. That's history. These idiots that want to play this, oh, I'm offended. They're the ones that are going to be doomed to relive history because they're too stupid to figure out how to look up something and do a little research and realize that things have changed. Yeah, you still have idiots running around, but it's done. You can't do anything about it. What are you going to do? Go back and take out a bunch of Civil War generals? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think, you know, if, if a lot of these village idiots here in Dallas and these uh, reverends, uh, if they could get together, they'd go back and fight the Civil War all over again just so they could uh, capture some relevancy. Here's the thing. Slavery's gone, has been for a while. I don't know of anybody that thinks slavery's a good idea, and any community organizer, any village idiot, any city councilman, any reverend that tells you, yeah, we need to focus on history and slavery and these Confederate monuments, uh, you got to look behind the curtain. These guys have way too much spare time. In other words, they've got nothing to do but stir the pot. You know, why don't you actually do something? Do something. Go to the inner city. Try to draw businesses down there. You know, well, we gave them a minimum wage wage raise. For what? There's no damn businesses there. You know, four kids studying in the same book. Well, it's because of that monument down there in, in the cemetery. All right, 2.33, the time we thought we thought it might come down. The bill, that is, the border insecurity bill. Uh, we thought it might come down uh, during the show, 2 to 5. Um, and if I know the lines are full. If you're on hold, I promise you, you get your day in the court of public opinion. Uh, but first, uh, you just heard from the WBAP newsroom, uh, Mitch McConnell has said that Trump is ready to sign this uh, spending bill that would avert another government shutdown. And at the same time, he's going to declare a national emergency to get additional funds for the border uh, border wall. Uh, Like I said, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell just came, uh, uh, gosh, it's it's only been about 15 minutes ago. Um, Queen Nancy, uh, Nancy, I've lost my ever-loving mind, Pelosi, is speaking Uh, After Mitch McConnell made that uh, announcement, uh, says Trump will declare the national uh, emergency. So so Nancy Pelosi is speaking about that. Let's dip in real quick. Walter Jones and John Dingle. Today is also a a day of sadness because it marks the one-year anniversary of the Parkland uh, tragedy of of gun violence. Yeah, okay, go on. One year ago, America's heart was broken by the horrific act of violence. In Parkland, Florida, today we remember the 17 lives that were stolen from us then. I'm very pleased that last night the uh, House Judiciary Committee under the leadership of Jerry Nadler uh, and with the full participation of our our members took a strong step to end the epidemic of gun violence. Okay, a- uh, I'll tell you what, she's going to cover everything she can possibly cover. The Parkland shooting, gun violence, all the rest. Uh, guys, can you monitor this? When she starts talking, 
about the border insecurity bill um, and about Trump declaring a state of emergency. Give me a high sign. Stop what I'm doing. And we'll go directly back to uh, Nancy uh, Pelosi. Uh, let's go to David in Dallas. David, thank you for waiting. How you doing, David? I'm so great. I'm glad you got, I could call you guys. Uh, I was at the briefing last Wednesday. And there's a lot of people in that council that just don't know their history. Okay, David, you're, I'm getting about every third word. I want to put David on hold, and uh, hopefully we can get a better connection. Um, Nancy Pelosi speaking as soon as she gets uh, to the border and security bill. We'll, go, we'll take you back live. In the meantime, let's go to Sean. Sean, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Sean? Hi, Rick. Love you. Love your show. Thanks thank for you. taking my call. Thank you. Now, can you hear me very well? I'm I've pulled got, over. So. I've got you fine. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, before I get to that, I, I went to Gettysburg a couple of years ago, and I, I toured all the monuments, the Confederate and the Union. And some of those monuments in the Confederate were just absolutely breathtaking. I mean, I was really saddened when I was there because I knew at that time they were thinking about taking a lot of the monuments down. And like the Mississippi one, the Louisiana one, they were just like incredible works of art. And so my question is, is why aren't these covered under, you know, our freedom of speech? Because they are works of art. And what do they do with them once they take them down? Uh, Well, if you're in the city of Dallas, where we have no leadership to speak of, uh, they send people in to snatch up the monuments in the dead of night and carry them off to some undisclosed warehouse where they will sit, sort of like uh, the Covenant of the Ark in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, I guess. Uh, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the intent was. Um, You know, we're not paying reparations, so we'll take down some monuments. The whole thing's just stupid. It's just ridiculous. You know, whether you like it, whether I like it, whether somebody else uh, likes it, um, history is what it is. You can't change history. It it happened. That's why it's called history. And appreciating these monuments and these statues is not about appreciating or agreeing with slavery. It's about, like you said, it's about our history. But it's, you know, I'm I'm just wondering the people that created these or the people that paid for them. I mean, don't they have a say? You know, I'm sure it's been many years ago, but I don't understand that because there's a lot of art out there that some people would consider obscene, but it stays up because it's it's covered. Well, yeah, I, I'm reminded of the crucifix um, submerged in a, a clear beaker of urine under yeah. uh, under a federal arts project grant. And, you know, that made a lot of us that believe in God upset. Um, but, you know, we're a nation ruled by law. I don't like all of them uh, for sure. But, you know, I, I'm sorry. This, this whole – what this is, Sean, in my mind – and, you know, I'm not 100% right 100% of the time – but what this is – You got a bunch of namby-pamby, weak-kneed sisters in government, and they're all trying to kowtow and pretend like they're blacker than the next white guy. And, oh, I feel your pain. No, you don't. You were never black. You were never a slave. You you don't know what you're talking about. And, yes, let's get rid of everything that has anything to do with Confederacy. Well, you can't do that. It's part of history. That doesn't mean that you have to lift up uh, the idea of slavery. And it doesn't mean that everything that had to do with the Confederacy was tied to slavery. That's, uh, these, these guys in these you know lower echelon political positions, all they're trying to do is stroke their constituency. Hey, look what I'm doing for you. I'm getting rid of a monument. Um, when in fact, that monument probably didn't mean squat to them. Well, and one last comment. I think they need to be very careful when they start talking about reparations for slavery because you know coming from a native american background there's a lot of reparations right there and this wait a minute wait wait sean sean you're a native american um well do i do i need to uh get on the same as pelosi and well, no no others? you you said you were a native <laughs> you're a native american yes, really well do you, I do you know elizabeth that. warren is she from your tribe <laughs> No, she's not from my tribe, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm just kidding would, you, Sean. No, I would really like that to be true, because then maybe she would be a little more uh, minimal to an actual Native American uh, issues right now. But, 
no, I mean, it's not something, you know, that we go about telling people. We would, um, you know, it's just something that's in our history. We're proud of it. But I think the thing is, is there was a lot of reparations that probably should have still, that should be done today for Native Americans. But you don't really hear them, um, you know, doing this type of thing like we're doing with the monuments. No, it, the, the whole monuments thing, uh, I venture to say, I mean, there may be a few thin-skinned, hypersensitive, politically correct morons out there that, oh my God, as long as a Confederate monument stands, I'll never be a full and complete person. Uh, you know, they've been watching too many Lifetime movies. But uh, for the most part, you know, those monuments aren't hurting anything except a vivid reminder of, um, of a civil war that killed more men than you can ab- absolutely imagine. You know, and not everything about the Civil War had to do with slavery. Not everything. So, you know, these, especially these these town clowns, these village idiots, these reverends uh, that purport to speak on uh, behalf of, uh, behalf of uh, the black community, you know, all they're trying to do is find some way to stay in the forefront, to stay relevant. And when you have leaderless leaders like we've got in Dallas, they'll fall for it every time. Friday morning. Yep. National Signing Day. How that was last Wednesday for football. Uh, no, I'm talking about Washington, D.C. Oh, day. Trump's National Signing Day. 5.07, yeah. we're going to hit that early. Yeah, we'll find out who he commits to. 8.17, Jay Betzel joins us. Jay will tell us what we can do around North Texas over the weekend. Along with Nicolo saying the news, Brad's weekend forecast, Steve Lamb Sports, traffic on the ones with Monty Cook, Brian and Hal, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. here on WBAP. You know, Clarity Home Improvements might want to think about a name change. Hi, I'm Brad Barton. Instead of Clarity Home Improvements, how about Clarity Life Improvements? Because Clarity's expanding line of outstanding products and services truly does enhance the quality of life in so many ways. Certainly, Clarity's windows save you a ton on utilities. They also beautify your home inside and out and secure it a lot better as well. And they isolate your interior from wind noise and street noise for better sleep and better sound. And Clarity's one-day garage floor and patio coatings will do as much for your exterior as Clarity's windows and entry doors do for your home you can have the best looking home in the neighborhood and remember curb appeals important money in your pocket when it comes time to market your home and clarity makes improving your home and life incredibly easy and affordable ask about clarity's preferred customer program and save up to 150 per window 250 per door and up to 500 dollars on clarity's one day garage floor and patio coatings this month and you're going to fall in love with your home all over again this coming spring call 1-888-458-3630 that's 1-888-458-3630 clarity home Improvement. Improvements.com. Hagen Durant here from Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference. First contact to final delivery. The Classic Chevrolet team prides itself on going above and beyond to help you find the best pre-owned to fit your needs, your budget, the price you want, the selection you need, with the service you deserve. Shop one of the largest pre-owned inventories in DFW. We stock every make, every model, every trim, every color, so we always have what you're looking for. Over 500 vehicles in stock, low mileage, lease return, one owner trades, cars, trucks, SUVs, vans, even luxury vehicles. Plus, our classic Chevrolet credit pros will work to get you the lowest financing rates possible. We have lenders standing by with millions in financing and are ready to lend today. Plus, we pay top dollar for every trade, every make, every model. Quick, easy, convenient. Find new roads at Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. Hear that? That's the most advanced cancer-fighting technology in Texas, taking aim at your cancer. It's 33 feet tall, and it weighs 110 tons. But this technological giant is built for care and precision. At Texas Center for Proton Therapy, some of the world's leading cancer specialists use this huge gantry to precisely target your tumor. Proton Therapy is a proven, advanced cancer treatment that delivers radiation right where it's needed. It focuses a beam only a few millimeters wide, directly on your cancer, while sparing healthy tissue, so you may have fewer of the side effects associated with cancer treatment and a better quality of life during and after. And that high-tech treatment is available right here in North Texas at Texas Center for Proton Therapy in Irving. Learn more at TexasProtons.com. 
That's TexasProtons.com. It's the original Fort Worth Gun Show this weekend only at the Will Rogers Memorial Center. Don't be confused. It's still the biggest and the best with over 1,200 tables of guns, knives, ammo, and supplies. Call 817-732-1194 or visit FortWorthGunShow.com. WBAP. First traffic. In Denton on northbound I-35E, you're looking at uh, delays all the way from just before Mayhill State School Road to Route 288. There's a disabled vehicle in the right lane. Southbound 161, the George Bush Turnpike in Irving. Road construction from Beltline Road to Walnut Hill. This has the left lane closed. In Dallas, still finding slow traffic on southbound 75 from Walnut Hill over to Haskell Avenue. This is due to an earlier crash. With WBAP First Traffic, I'm Dave Allen. WBAP can be heard on your phone. Just go and download the WBAP app. Get the latest news, on-demand audio, and listen live. News Talk 820 WBAP. Wherever you want us. All right, welcome back. 2.45 the time. Pelosi uh, speaking now after Mitch McConnell. Uh, Republicans, you, you better watch out. You better be careful about that door you're opening if Trump declares an emergency. Uh, yeah, okay, Nancy, that's fine. Uh, take another pill and you'll be all right. Uh, President Trump is ready to sign this uh, compromise spending bill that would stop another government shutdown and would, at the same time, he says he's going to declare a national emergency to get additional funds for a border wall. This all came from an announcement just about 30 minutes ago from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And then, of course, Nancy uh, jumped up there looking very smart in her blue suit, um, saying, well, you better watch out, you better not cry, you know, that whole thing. Uh, The Senate is voting right now. Uh, They are voting on the plane. I think they started voting about 10, 15 minutes ago, Washington time. Uh, The House, of course, as you know, they vote later after the Senate. Um, The president has said he's prepared to sign the bill. This is according to McConnell. Uh, He also said at the same time he'll be issuing a national emergency declaration uh, to get more money for the wall. And Mitch McConnell, believe it or not, said, I'm going to support the national emergency declaration. Uh, A lot of Republican senators, uh, senators, oh, no, don't do that. Uh, You know, we don't want to vote on the bipartisan measure until we get a signal from the president whether he's going to back this. In other words, they're just a bunch of politicians. Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to do it. You do it. No, I'm not going to do it. You do it. Um, Nobody wants to enter into a pointless exercise if the president's going to veto that that bill. Well, he's already said now he's not going to veto. He's going to sign and declare a state of emergency. And, of course, Pelosi just came out and just blathered like an idiot for about 20 minutes. Well, I wish he would uh, declare an emergency on gun violence. You know, a year ago today... The Parkland shooting, and she was all over the road. I don't really know where she was going. Um, so if you're, I know the lines have been full since we started. If you're on hold, you get your day in the court of public opinion. Uh, you've just heard Trump's going to sign the deal uh, primarily just to prevent the government from shutting down. But at the same time, he's going to declare a national emergency to get the funds needed to uh, to do what he said he would do, build a wall, and that doesn't mean just the 55 miles of wall uh, that the Democrat, well, you know what, uh, let's go ahead and give the guy 50 miles. Ah, give him 55 miles. Yeah, he's not having any of that. Uh, David in Dallas. David, thanks for waiting. How you doing, David? I'm doing great. I wanted to call that I was at the city council briefing last Wednesday, and unfortunately we have you know 11 people on the city council that just don't know their history. They don't understand that these are American heroes that stood up against an invading army to collect tax. And unfortunately, Dallas doesn't have a lot of even old or monuments at all. I think we need to protect the few things that we do have. These people, you're exactly right about them. They just want to sterilize our city because of their complete ignorance and stupidity. Well, it's not only that, David. It's a natural tendency by some of these folks uh, to push back any new information. You know, some talking point they got from somebody well, sometime. Old information, too. Any it, it's information it's they very back antiquated. On. You're right. Anything that had anything to do with the South or the Confederacy 
or as you say, it, uh, you know, um, heroes within the war. All of that goes out the window with these guys because if it had anything to do with the Confederacy, it had to do with supporting slavery. Slavery's bad, and therefore we have to get rid of everything. That's nuts. But I will tell you that these these guys that voted on this, they will buckle and kowtow to any kind of pressure. So if there's people that really feel a certain way on this and want to protect this stuff, they need to hear from you. You need to email them. You need to mail them. You need to contact them. They need to know. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, you know, the city council, as expected, you know, they caved on the thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, they did. But that don't they have to go? They have to get f- uh, final approval from the landmark commission, right? They do. So those people need to hear from everyone that wa- that wants to protect our public art. This is our public art, not these eleven clowns' public art that they intentionally want to misinterpret. You know, it's ours, not theirs. They don't want to put this out for vote. They just want to pressure onto the public their opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Just like they want to airbrush out of history anything they don't agree with. That's they want right. they want to read into the present those things that make them and those people alone relevant. I, I'm you sorry. I, I don't I don't buy that. Do you? Yeah, you fully understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, uh, and it's just unfortunate. It's sad. Well, I think, uh, and I don't have the number handy, but the Landmark Commission, you know, they uh, have to give the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I mean, you would expect the brain trust uh, of uh, the city fathers here in Dallas to do what they did, cave to the slightest bit of pressure. You know, just some town clown. You know, this may it throws people mentally back into a time that wasn't behooving of black people. Shut up. All right? I, I mean, you you airbrush out of history, as I just said, those things that don't work for your agenda. Then you read in to the present those things that further your narrative. Come on. You know, I don't... Are they, uh, Forgive me for being in... Well, hopefully we don't have any little kids this early. Is there, in the entire city council, are there one set of cojones between all of them? Is it possible, do you think? I mean, maybe we need to have a a thorough physical exam because we may be working at a deficit here. Um, Let's go to, uh, where am I going? I'm going to uh, Richard uh, in Selena. Richard, thank you for waiting. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I spoke to you on the last statue deal. I still think what we ought to do is for about 10% of what they're talking about, spending building a gazebo around it with a curtain and a button, and if somebody wants to look at it, they push the button. We can even put a sign on top that says, hey, there's going to be an offensive sign out here in just a few minutes for you people. You need to turn the other way if you don't want to see it. Hey, you know what? That that makes it for 400, what is it, 420000 they can saw the thing uh, into several pieces and carry it off to some undisclosed warehouse. Yeah, this way everybody gets to see it again. If they exactly. Want. Just put a giant shroud around this thing so nobody can see it unless they choose to go see it. And then they walk up, walk behind the curtain. There you go, Richard. I think that'd be great. And you know, I believe Mitch is finally getting some cojones, as you say. <laughs> you think they're coming out of the sack for a change? I don't know, man. I tell you, for, for him to say what he said... Uh, he's got to feel pretty certain that uh, he knows which way this is going. If you, I, I think so too. <laughs> if you haven't heard, Mitch McConnell just said uh, the president will sign the bill. Evidently, read it. Unlike uh, the congressman, uh, he read the bill. He's ready to sign it. But beware, because as soon as he signs it, he's declaring a state of emergency to get the needed funds for the rest of the wall. And then Mitch McConnell, believe it or not. That's what Richard was talking about, believe it or not, said, and I'll support his declaration of the state of emergency. How about that? Mitch McConnell actually did something. Can you believe it? Maybe he's getting those testosterone shots, you think? You know, who knows? No, I I don't know. All right, 1-800, I've got to be careful with that, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. And then Nancy Pelosi, she went off on her rant. I'm not. A, I was. Tr- I was going to dip into it and bring you some of it, but it's. It's. It, remember when you were a little kid and you went to the, the theme park and you rode the go karts and you just bounced off the sides. I mean, that's that's like trying trying to follow one of her speeches. 
okay, she's talking about, no, she's talking about, well, wait a minute, she's going back. It, it just it would have been a waste of your time, and I don't want to do that. Uh, 2.55 the time, your call straight ahead. What do you think? The government, yeah, it's going to stay open. You don't have to worry about it. The Earth's not, not going to be spinning off its axis. Uh, no government shutdown, but a state of emergency. It's coming. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. The agreement will su- provide smart border security, increasing support for technologies at our ports of entry. It will not fund the president's expensive, ineffective wall. Yeah, okay. There you go. Chucky e. Schumer, um, sitting at the feet of wisdom. How's he knows it's ineffective? How, how does this guy know anything? Does he ever cite his source? Well, we talked to Border Patrol. We talked to sector supervisors. We've talked to people. No, it's just if Trump wants it, we don't. That's it. That's, that's the entire measure of their legislation. Whatever Trump wants, we don't want. Whatever he requests, we turn down. Uh, If you're just joining us, Mitch McConnell announced uh, just about an hour ago now, the president will, uh, he will sign the the spending bill and at the same time declare a state of emergency um, to get the additional funding. And then Pelosi came on and yammered for about 20 minutes, and I'm sorry, I, I know my way around the barn, but I couldn't follow any of it. It was about... A year ago, the Parkland shooting, uh, if the president wants to declare an emergency, do it on... Do we have some of that? Do we have anything that she said that made sense? Uh, okay, here, here's a little bit of... Because I know a day without Pelosi is like a day without hemorrhoids. So here you go. You want to talk about a national emergency? Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about today, the okay. one-year anniversary of another manifestation of the epidemic of gun violence in America. That's a national emergency. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? Okay. Uh, Yeah, because gun violence has nothing to do with human behavior. It has to do with some dreaded uh, pandemic uh, from coast to coast. Play play just the first of that. Does she sound drunk to you? Go ahead. You want to talk about a national emergency? Let's talk about today, the one-year anniversary. You want to talk about an action emergency? Uh, Let's talk about... Guns. You want to? Want to talk about that? She sounds drunk, doesn't she? You know, they need to need to do something. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. We are reviewing our options, and we have to see what the uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where uh, are we we're doing our options? The, uh, there's any good faith negotiations to have with the Republicans yeah. in Congress. We're doing our options. Yes, Surrey Bob, we're doing our options. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make fun of well, I'm not sorry. I don't really mean, mean to make fun of her, but man, somebody somebody needs to check her out. Make sure she's okay. I'm a little concerned. John in Dallas. John, how you doing? Hey, Rick, doing great, and you're doing a fantastic show. I just want to amend one thing. Nancy does not need a pill. Nancy needs a bottle of pills just to <laughs> medicate her for 10 minutes. I mean, I just, it, it, every time I hear her speak, I want to go get a drink, and, and it doesn't do any good. Now, the reason I called is David hit the nail on the head, and that is you need to know your history if you're going to go tear down statues. And a great example is tearing down, I mean, spending a fortune of our tax dollars, tearing down the statue of General Lee over slavery. General Robert E. Lee disliked slavery intensely. The only reason he took the job as commanding general was he had been commanding general of the Virginia militia, and when Virginia seceded from the Union, he felt it it, an honorable thing to do to continue to lead his men. And here we go. We're going to take down another historical monument, and the historical 
statement that monument screams is we went through a horrible, deadly war with with ourselves, and look at us now. We're the strongest country in the world. We're the wealthiest country in the world, and we've got the worst Congress in the world. But that's not point of we. Uh, uh, but but it, it tells people this country is a strong country, and it reminds them of what we went through. Just the same thing as as when Scotland and England were wanting to kill each other. Yeah, it, here's the the see you've very correctly nailed the problem with revisionist history. Um, you know, the the thing about Lee is true, and of course, you know, the other side can make other arguments, but uh, history is history. And we take away from it uh, those things that uh, we have filtered through our particular life experience, how we were educated, how we weren't educated, whatever it is. But you start airbrushing out of society those portions of history uh, that you think are unfair or you didn't like or were unwarranted. Well, uh, that's I'm sorry, you can't do that. That that, that that's not uh, that's not accurate. And you know all these town clowns here in Dallas wanting to tie tie anything that says Confederate with slavery are just wrong. But you can't tell them they're wrong. You you have to rely on your elected leadership. Uh, which we don't have any, uh, to say, hey, I'm sorry, you can't do that. I completely agree with you. And and when you talk about leadership, I think, you know, how in the world can you follow people who do things like that, who uh, who just absolutely have no respect for history? I mean, you can get, look at the Mississippi River and say, golly, what a river that is. Or you can look at the history of that river and, and what it did for this country, and the same thing is true, you know, to, to look at the Grand Canyon. I mean, that, that's, that is historic, whether or not it was done naturally. But I, I just every time I go to Washington, D.C., I love to go see the statues and things like that. Well, if, if, to make the, point if that, the town clowns, if the village idiots, if the P- PC police have their way, um, your visit will be much shorter because there won't be anything to see. Um, you got to think the Civil War, nearly as many men died in captivity as were killed in the entire Vietnam War. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands died of disease. Roughly 2% of the population was wiped out at that time. And about 620,000 men lost their lives in the line of duty. That, to me, is enough history right there. Leave it alone. Get over it. It means different things to different people. Good example, a good friend of mine and I decided to uh, take on a cause. It was the Mount Soledad Soledad Cross. It's a 53-foot cross, and it was like a 17-year legal battle with a a bunch of atheists. Well, if you turn your head just right on a a non-cloudy day in San Diego going south, you can catch a glimpse of that cross, and it offends me. Right, um, so you know we we got a, together a panel and started working on it. Well, this friend of mine that we were working on it with, Phil, he's Jewish, so obviously that that cross <laughs> had different symbolism to him than it did to me as a Christian. Right? As a matter of fact, his dad was really upset with him uh, for defending a cross. Now, his dad, you have to remember, it was dad's past now, but uh, his dad was a survivor of uh, of the Holocaust. He was he was liberated from a death camp, still had the tattoo on his wrist. So he's pretty upset to find out his son is working with a Christian guy in San Diego trying to save a cross until he was flown in and walked around the base of the cross, which was a war memorial to Korea, and his dad recognized some of those people. So, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, these idiots here in Dallas, and of course, you know, we're not unique. They're all over the place. Uh, trying to, they're struggling to be relevant. You know, Robert E. Lee, well, there you go. Nobody knows the trouble I say. I'm sorry. We're not buying that anymore. Move on to something else. You want to help out the black community? They need it because they've been voting for Democrats for a half century, and all they've done is dig themselves a hole. You know, taking down Civil War monuments is not going to change any of that.
If Mr. Trump declares a national emergency along the southern border, he is well aware that it will face immediate court challenges from Democrats and interest groups that could tie up construction for months or years. But it might give him political cover for a bedrock campaign promise that the wall would be built, even though Mexico was supposed to pay for it. Well, and we told you how they would pay for it, right? We are reviewing our options. We have to see what the president will say. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't believe that the... Yeah. Uh, there's any good faith negotiations to have with the Republicans in Congress. Okay, well, yeah, we can't, we can't, yeah, give me another drink there, Chucky. Hey, thank you. Uh, what about the national emergency, uh, uh, Nancy? I mean, what about that? And that's kind of a big deal, right? You want to talk about a national emergency? Yeah, I do. Let's talk about today, okay. the one-year anniversary of another manifestation uh-huh. of the epidemic of gun violence in America. Yeah. That's a you want to talk about a national emergency? Yeah, okay, I do. Um, man, I am concerned for her. I really am. I mean, I hope she's okay. Um, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Mitch McConnell made the announcement, President's going to sign the bill, and at the same time, declare a state of emergency to allocate funds to build his wall. And, of course, uh, I guarantee you, uh, Chucky Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, they've got somebody sitting on the steps of the courthouse right now, briefcase in hand, ready to file suit. Well, let's go to Jason in Flower Mound. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing great, Rick. There's actually an incredible and moving story that goes behind the, the Lee statue that everybody needs to be aware of at some point. But it was built after 25 years of collections the same way the Statue of Liberty came to be, by small donations from kids and families and widows and orphans. Oh, you mean the it, base for the Statue of Liberty? Yes. Right, yeah, because the Statue of Liberty was in a warehouse in pieces having been shipped here from France, but they had no way to put it up because they didn't have a base. So they did it. It was the first public funding project, actually, and it was primarily less than a dollar per donation. And I think it was like 150 grand or something like that to build the base. Well, it's the same thing with the Lee statue. It took 25 years to get it. And Dallas uh, received it as a gift and promised the land of a small park there so that it could be displayed in perpetuity. The statute itself tells us exactly what, and it was built by one of the foremost uh, sculptors in the world. The aid to Robert E. Lee was not a real aid. It represented the men of Texas that served at it. The men of Texas had the second highest casualty rate of any group of uh, soldiers in the the Civil War, and they loved Lee. The small miniature um, Arlington represents Lee's personal sacrifice of his home and his property, uh, and land that was taken. I feel that since it was a gift to the city of Dallas, if they don't want it, they should give it back to the people of Dallas. At worst, the people should be able to buy it back for the towing cost and put it up on display because they have breached the faith with the people of the city of Dallas. Oh, well, they, they do that once a week. Um, these leaderless leaders and non-representing representatives. But this is, Jason, here's the other side of that argument. Uh, these town clowns, these village idiots, these irreverent uh, uh, community organizers, um, they would say, well, you know, too bad. Um, you know, they fought for the South. The South wanted slavery. Therefore, everybody that fought in the Confederacy uh, was a slave supporter. And uh, we need to just erase them from, from, from memory. We need to erase them from the history books. We need to erase them uh, from public property. We need to, uh, okay, stop. Don't you think it's kind of a good idea to let people know what how how this country you know progressed what it went through you know don't you think it's probably a good idea to remember some of the things that happened so that we don't make the same mistakes as a constant reminder yeah there were heroes in the south just like there were heroes in the north you know and there were people in the south that didn't want slavery I don't want to go through that why should you you know if you're a black person do you get up every morning and go to bed every night thinking about slavery? I I bet you don't. I bet you don't unless you've got uh, one of these community organizers in your ear in your ear. Well, you know, you don't have that white privilege. You'll never get anywhere without my help. I'm walking point. I'm fighting the fight just like we did in the civil rights. I mean, everything is past tense. 
you know, nobody wants to talk about what's been done, right? All right. Uh, all right. What's that? Okay. The Senate has passed the spending bill. All right. There you go. Now the House will vote. They probably two or three hours from now, the House will vote. And of course, they're going to pass the bill. So for all intents and purposes, we now know the bill has been passed. Uh, Mitch McConnell has said he just finished speaking with Trump about an hour and 10 minutes ago. Trump will sign it. And at the same time, he'll declare an emergency so he can allocate funds from other sources to build his wall. Uh, hey, I told you in the promo. Oh, t- you have the promo from last night? Yeah, I told you in the promo he had three different options, right? He could say, nope, no bill. Government shuts down again um, because the Democrats, they're, they're not going to go one way or the other. He could have either shut the government down again. He could sign the bill or um, simply declare the, the emergency. Well, I think he's doing the best of both. Well, this is what I was talking about. Yes, I'd like border wall funding bills for $5.7 billion. Thank you, Alex. This is insane. What are we doing? We can either declare an emergency, start appropriating funds to build a wall. We can wait for the bill that nobody's seen yet. Or, or we can just shut the government down again. Hey, you choose. You be the deciding factor. Join me today at 2. Rick Roberts, 2 to 5 on News Talk 820 WBAV. There you go. Uh, one of my favorite shows, too, by the way, Jeopardy. Uh, so there, now we know. Now we know what's happened, and we'll find out how you feel about it. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. No more death threats. Uh, you know, sometimes you just can't please everybody, and obviously I haven't pleased a couple folks. What time's he get off work? Where's he going? Wait, um, yeah, I probably shouldn't say anything else. I'll just let it go with that. the president making an end run around Congress. Here he said, let us respect what the committee will do, and then walks away from it. Well, that's because you're a moron, Nancy. He's working on behalf of us. He's not playing your political game that is the stuff of daily life in the nation's capital. Yeah, I mean, when you deal, I learned a long time ago in this business you know, you try, you try as you might, not everybody's going to be on the same page. So you try to be as patient as you can possible, possibly be with people. But if you're dealing with a moron, a jerk, you treat them the same way. You know, don't, don't sit there in Pelosi and tell, well, we want to work with the president. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know, if the president, God forbid, fell over in the next 15 minutes... You know, they'd probably all go have a party tonight. So don't tell me. We're not stupid, Nancy. We're just not. Maybe we were at one time. Well, I don't know that we were stupid. We were indifferent to what was going on in the nation's capital because we thought, well, you wear a suit and tie. You're on TV every night uh, on the news, so you must be smarter than us. And um, God forbid that you would do anything that's not in our best interest. And then we woke up out of our slumber and realized you'd basically been uh, in this for yourself from day one. Uh, let's go to Wayne in Waco. Wayne, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Wayne? Great, sir. Um Looking at the the removal of statues there from a historical perspective, and when the communists, if you look at the history of when communists overthrow a country, among several things that they do, part of it is is divide the groups, get the people to fight against each other. Right. They they revise the history, and they come remove the monuments and memorials and statues, which which to me would place the Dallas City Council in a in a category that the communists refer to as useful idiots. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. There are those that live among us, uh, as evidenced by the support for Beto and Cortez and Omar, the anti-Semite and all the rest. Well, I'll give you an example. I, I get contrarians uh, via email every day. Here's this guy, Rick. How does removing the statue change what happened in history? It doesn't. So what difference does it make whether the statue is there or not? If you haven't seen the statue by now, you won't miss it. 
I don't something anyone is going to look at the statue every day anyway. If a majority of people want it done, you are the one that needs to get over it. It's but the majority of the people don't. A handful of village idiots known as the Dallas City Council voted on this. Bye bye statue exclamation mark. What an idiot wrapped in an enigma. Laugh out loud. Uh, so you know I get those all the time. And that one's not very creative. I mean, I get a lot of them. Uh, these are just simply people that are uninformed. He thought the people voted on it. Uh, no, the city council voted on it. And trust me, the city council of Dallas, Texas, is not the brain trust of the Southwest. I uh, hate to break that to you. Mike in Rockwall. Mike, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Mike? Pretty good, Rick. Uh, well, if I had my druthers, I would prefer Trump not sign this bill and not declare the national emergency. Uh, first of all, if he declares the national emergency when a Democrat uh, becomes president, they're going to declare national emergency and uh, try to take people's guns away, as what Nancy said in uh, one of those sound bites you had there. Uh, you know, she said, you want to talk national emergency? How about all the gun deaths or, <laughs> or the gun problems? So, see, that's exactly where they'll go. So now, okay, uh, let's look at this. I know it would be politically risky, but if Trump said, I'm not signing that bill, and then <clears throat> held a one-hour press conference with PowerPoint presentations just blasting data and images and facts about all the evil that is coming across that southern border, the drugs, the deaths, images of gang violence, images of drug addicts, images of homeless people because of drug problems. How, I've, I've emailed President Trump so many times telling him, look, you're a real estate agent, a real estate mogul. Why don't you use PowerPoint? Mike, PowerPoint Mike hang, hang on. Hang, a, hang on a second, okay. Mike. Do you okay. think any of that would make any difference to any Democrat anywhere? No Democrat, but I don't care. They're stuck anyway. I, I, I battle with them online all the time. They're stuck. And who cares? As long as we don't lose they, any more Republicans. They don't, they, here's the thing, Mike. I don't mean to jump on you there. They don't care about the human trafficking. They don't care about the drug trafficking. They don't care about the rape and the child abuse. They don't care about the impact of the... United States economy. Um, they don't care about any of that. They only care about one thing, Get an, getting enough empty-headed morons to vote for them in the 2020 election. My God, I mean, think about it. The Democrats, they're the party of infanticide. They're the party that says, hey, yeah, you can have a kid, um, and even you can abort it right up to the time it's born. As a matter of fact, it can be born, and we'll just set it aside and make it, not my words, their words. Well, just set it aside, make it comfortable. Maybe you go down to the cafeteria at the hospital. Uh, you know, they have chocolate pie today. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Maybe you have a cup of coffee. We'll just chat about what you want to do with this child. Man, there's a, I, forgive me, I, there's a hotter place in hell for those folks. I don't care who you're, short, tall, fat, thin, black, white. There's a hotter place in hell for you. So if you've got a party that supports killing babies, not fetus tissue, not babies, human beings, just short, right? Uh, if you've got a party that supports that, then do you think they care about a few people being raped? That you think they care about kids being sold into slate? You think they care about any of that? They don't care about. They care about one thing. That's winning elections. Uh, Dwayne in Fort Worth. Nancy, or is that right? Yeah, Dwayne. Dwayne, thank you for waiting. Yeah. Hi. Oh no problem. Yeah, I was uh, a friend of mine shared a meme with me from uh, the State of the Union speech, and he sent me a picture in the papers. Nancy was shuffling. He wrote on there how to apply. How to apply polygrip, which I actually <laughs> thought was pretty, which actually I thought was pretty good. Um, I, I thought that was pretty good. That's probably what she was doing. That might explain her slurred speech too. Who knows? Uh, did you hear? Nice. Did you hear this afternoon? I mean, I don't think she's drunk. I mean, I don't know whether she. I've, I've I've heard her a number of times, and I really wonder if she's got all her marbles. To be honest with you, yeah, I think she's on. I think she's on 
And, you know, from my mouth to God's ear, nothing bad would happen to her. But I think she's on some kind of medication. I think, yeah, well, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I don't know. I wouldn't say she is, but, but she's, there are times I look at that and I go, hmm, let's see, I spent time in the military. I used to party when I wasn't working. That looks like compared to me. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but no, I, I just can't, you know, I look at that and it's like, I don't know what it is with you people. And you're right, though, with the Democrats, it's like Tip O'Neill said one time to a gentleman in uh, on the news, a uh, speaker from the 80s, and he said, and the guy in the news asked me, he says, why do you want to do all this? And you get blasted for everything, news and all that, and he said, it's all about power. Yeah. You know, it, it's all about power. And it's the same way with our good friends over here in Dallas. You know, instead of calling him the mayor over there, just call him Wilson. Like Wilson, like he had to... Uh, the race history in the book 1984. Uh, the, guy, the guy, the guy is Wilson. the guy is such a weak need sister. I mean, uh, this guy. If you look at both his index fingers any day, any day of the week, both his index fingers are all wrinkly, like a five year old that's been in the bathtub too long, uh, and that's from sticking them in his mouth and then raising them in the political wind to figure out what he should do. Today we will keep government open and. Uh, that's very important for the American people, but we will also, as we do so, protect our borders and protect our values. Okay. All right. Thanks, Nance. It represents a fair compromise that includes priorities from both sides of the aisle. I expect the legislation will pass this chamber with a significant bipartisan majority, pass the House, and be sent to the President with plenty of time to avoid a government shutdown tomorrow at midnight. Well, okay. Thank you, Chucky Schumer. <sighs> what a moron. I, I mean, truly, these folks have stayed at the party way too long, haven't they? Uh, listen to this from Nancy, and then I'll get to your calls. Uh, from uh, Sweet Cheeks Pelosi. Listen, listen to what she says. Today, we will keep government open, and uh, that's very important for the American people. But we- wait, 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 how do you know that? Very important to the American people? I don't give a flip one way or the other whether you keep it open. That's very important to the American people. We know, I called them last night, and they said, yeah, it's important. That may be important to a bunch of non-essential government jobs, but I don't know that it's necessarily... You know, last night, I could not sleep. I mean, I'm hitting the pillow and tossing and turning and, and getting up, putting my boots on, I'm walking outside, and walking. Whew, just nervous energy. I could not sleep. Is the government going to get shut down? Uh, what's going to happen? Come on, Nancy. I mean, this is professional politicians actually believe you, you, you subscribe to this idiocy. Go ahead, Nancy. Go ahead. We'll also, as we do so, protect our borders and protect our values. Okay. I don't know what you, I don't know what your values are. Hey, what do you think about uh, a woman delivering a child uh, and then setting aside to make it comfortable while she and the doctor go out in the hall and get a cup of coffee and chat about what to do? What kind of values is that? Well, what is that, Nance? Uh, well, that's a woman's uh, choice on her uh, uh, health. You know, when the baby's born, sorry, partner, you're out of choices. Choice has been made. There's a human being right there. Well, we'll just uh, let it uh, just uh, die naturally. What? I don't care what you... You're, that's murder. But tell me more. Tell me more about your democratic values. And then that crap, uh, just as we always have, we're going to protect the borders. You have done nothing but throw spike strips uh, in the road for this president every time he's tried to protect the southern border. I mean, really? Who is buying this crap? Do you have to be deaf, dumb, and blind to be a Democrat? Evidently. Uh, James and Wiley. James, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, James? I'm doing fine. Thank you for taking my call. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I've thought about the statue. I mean, I... I know that Nancy's got you all riled up and, and you can't sleep. When she probably <laughs> do what she does, just get a bottle of Jim Bean and go out there into the, into the parlor. And you know, may, right maybe place. that's it. Just a bottle of Jameson in both hands and just kick back and, no, I, I can't do that. Uh, uh, anyways, I thought about the statue. Uh, I've got really a couple of questions on that. Maybe you can enlighten me. Uh, 
what are they going to do with that statue? I mean, it, it sounds like they're planning on having some some sort of preserving thing where they box it all up and take it off somewhere and store it. Is that what they're planning to do? With yeah, the, this is what I've heard, uh, James. <laughs> Um, because of our leaderless leaders and non-representing representatives, uh, our brain trust in the city of Dallas, um, basically 11 people have decided to remove a 65-foot-tall statue. I think it's the, if I'm not mistaken, it's the, city is, the city's oldest statue. I think it was put there in 1896. They say it's so tall, they're going to have to cut it up into pieces and then box it up and store it like they did uh, the the Lee, uh, I guess the General Lee uh, statue, and it's only going to cost. I mean, we're so flush with cash in this city. It's only going to cost four hundred and eighty thousand dollars, half a million dollars. Well, I have two questions. Then the first one is why are you going to save it? Are they, did they did they have some foreknowledge that the South is going to rise again and slavery is going to be reestablished? I, so I, we want to keep us a, a, keep the statue around a. You know, to show we hey we we really did. Uh, you know, maybe it maybe they think it's it's going to be at some point at some time an antiquated historical relic relic of uh, of the Southern United States. I think they're probably doing it to keep people from losing their minds. But I tell you what, for four hundred and eighty grand, you can put it up in my backyard. Hey, I, I mean, you know, you you know, I mean, you can get a demolition crew to come out there and take it down for twenty thousand dollars and cart it off. Now, I, in a Washington, four hundred thousand dollars. If if they're going to just cart it off, stick it in the warehouse, and forget it, why spend that? You know, why not just destroy it and forget it? You are asking questions, James, that nobody has answers to. I'm pretty sure the people that made the decision to get rid of it, they don't even have the answer. Uh, but all of these, you know, all of these. <laughs> Community activists and council members, they go back to their district, primarily districts of color. Hey, look what I did. <laughs> I changed the course of history. Ah, uh, yeah, we may not have got reparations, but I got them to get rid of anything that even smacks of the Confederacy. Well, what's that got to do with anything? That's not helping some black kid go to school. That's not replacing street lights uh, next to a crack house in a neighborhood where a grandmother's trying to raise four grandkids. I, I mean, Sorry. I'm not impressed, and I'm not impressed by these, you know, free to be you and me hug a tree types on the council. That well, you know, if the black folks want that, that's what we should do because I can feel their pain. You can't feel anything. You can't feel a black person's pain. You're not black, all right. And they can't feel a slave's pain be, pain because they weren't slaves. We got to get over this crap. I mean, if you want to do something for your your neighborhood or your district. Collectively get together, help the schools out, help the infrastructure, help those people that uh, need some job training. You know, oh, I got rid of a Confederate statue. Woo, look at me. I'm uh, I'm a real freedom fighter. I am. Oh, shut up. Let's go to Joy in the Highland Village. Joy, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Thank you so much for taking my call, sir. Yes, sir. You have led right into my comments about, you know, the black people, the slavery, the statues. I'm 67 years old. Both of my grandparents, both of my grandmothers, came here from different states in the late 1800s. They were white. I am, we're as Irish as we can be. And they came here with other families they wouldn't come here with their own family, but they came here with other families, and they came here to Cop Hill area in the in the Whitesboro area here in Texas as twelve and thirteen year girls, thirteen year old girls, and they were crop workers, and all they got for it was a place to live. I call that slavery too. You know, you know, well, what? there were a lot of Irish slaves. There were a lot of Asians. I mean, there were, look, slavery, um, while we always talk about it in reference uh, to African Americans, there were a lot of slaves. You know what? At 3.53 Central Time on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2019, there is still slavery on this planet. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I had one grandmother that made her life was so bitter I had another grandmother that the same condition happened to her. She chose not to be bitter. And thank God my parents chose, told us we always have choices that we make. 
it's not what happens to us in our lives. It's how we respond to it and how we react to things. Absolutely. If you want to be a victim, uh, I will be the first to tell you there are groups, there are individuals, there are organizations that will support and further that victim mentality um, as soon as your feet hit the floor in the morning. Why? Because it's a cottage industry. Did you know that? Victim, uh, victimhood is a, it's a cottage industry, and it's way political. If you think about it, Democrats, their whole basis, their whole platform is making people victims. And who's there to help them? <laughs> Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. Well, yes, we're here to help you, yes. Uh, a bunch of damn socialists. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. Declaring a national emergency would be a lawless act, a gross abuse of the power of the presidency, and a desperate attempt to distract from the fact that President Trump broke his core promise to have Mexico pay for the wall. Okay, you are a bald faced liar. Chucky Schumer, you're a you're a liar. You lie through your teeth with your eyes wide open to the American people. Play that sound effect again. Stop when I say stop. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Declaring a national emergency would be a lawless act. Stop. A gross stop. abuse. It's not a lawless act. He's well within um, the purview of president to do this if he wishes. So where do you get lawless, Chucky? Go ahead. Of the power of the presidency. Stop. It's an abuse of the power of the presidency? Not at all. He has perfect legal right to do exactly that. Legal minds have already determined so. So if you want to lie to your empty-headed constituency, at least begin each sentence with once upon a time. Go ahead and a desperate attempt to distract from the fact that President Trump broke his core promise to have Mexico pay for the wall. Again, another lie. I've already explained to you the very, very many options he has. All, all, with the money for the wall coming out of Mexico in the form of tariffs, tariffs increase fees. Um, This guy is an absolute liar. Along with Nancy Pelosi, I don't know that I've ever heard two politicians lie as much. Uh, Let's go to Bob in Arlington. Bob, thank you for waiting. How are you doing, Bob? Uh, Doing great, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. Um, Totally agree with you there on Chuck. I guess I'm going to talk about Nancy real quick, if that's okay. Sure. Um, I just, you know, the other day I really got, I I really couldn't believe what she was saying, you know, when she said that it's, uh, you know, it's immoral. It's immoral to have a wall. But yet then, on the other hand, here we are with her party saying, hey, you know what, it's okay to have abortions in the third trimester. So, you know, I would I would hate to be Nancy Pelosi because I know as a Christian man, I couldn't live with both of those conflicts in my life. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable how one can be moral uh, and the other one is so blatantly immoral. So I guess that's just the way Democrats look at things now. I mean, I... I, I was just blown away by that. And um, the only the other thing I wanted to say is uh, I was telling her, uh, your screener that my daughter is a physician's assistant. She's not a full-fledged doctor, but right. um, she she works at a general practice um, uh, group and everything. And they talk, you know, their doctor's friends get together and have coffee and they talk about different things. And, um, you know, they sometimes talk about, you know, abortion. And they, and they were a lot of the doctors that, you know, she talked to, they were actually very upset about what New York was doing in some of these other states because um, the majority of at least the doctors that she was talking to, um, they're very uncomfortable with doing abortions anyhow at any trimester because, you know, when they're doctors, they take they take an oath to, to protect life and to help people. 
And um, and then for the ones who aren't maybe as much like that, uh, some of, her, of the of her other doctor's friends are more like, can you imagine how much liability insurance I would have to have if something happened on that, uh, if, you know, if I'm in the middle of this and something goes wrong? So I, I think uh, I think a lot of this discussion, too, they haven't really talked about what the doctors think. And I, I just was kind of thinking, you know, um, they really haven't talked to him because I think there's a lot of doctors out there that would be pretty uncomfortable. I think things. you're right. I, 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 you know, I think you hit the, uh, the nail on the head. You know, Nancy Pelosi and that, uh, that uh, ragtag band of uh, absolute liars hoping to get the, uh, the millennials and younger in their camp for the 2020 election, mm-hmm. they're going to sit there and tell you a wall is immoral, but murdering a human being at birth is not immoral? Come on. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's right, just and, nuts. And and uh, my, my daughter even told me, too, though, that they said, you know, there could be some, you know, this could be another example of where there may be, you know, a, a, another Kermit Gosnell coming out, but it may not even be a doctor. It could be a nurse practitioner. Exactly. Be somebody who's who's less who's less trained to be able to do these kind of procedures, and that makes it that makes it even more of a risk for that woman because now all of a sudden you've got more and more people that are performing these procedures. Egg, that are precisely, and and best of luck to your daughter. You know, I was sitting here thinking about this yesterday, from the ridiculous to the sublime. You know, you can have full-term abortions now. Uh, The Virginia governor is supporting that. And, of course, others in New York are are supporting full-term abortions. You can actually have the child. It can be delivered in the conventional way. And what did the Virginia governor said? Oh, well, we'll just set it aside and make it comfortable while we have a chat and decide whether we're going to keep it or not. Really? So you've got some empty-headed mom uh, that couldn't figure out how to keep her knees together, and now she's got a kid. Well, I don't know if I want it or not. Can I go down to the vending machine? I need to get a a cup of coffee and figure this out. Uh, Why is that any different than a bunch of Nazis? Well, you know what? We don't like these people. I know they're full-grown, and, well, some of them are children, but we don't like them. Let's just get rid of them. Can we get rid of them? Yeah, elimination squads. Yeah, let's just get rid of them. It'd be a nicer place without them. Man, wasn't that Hitler's whole idea? Hey, get rid of these all these Jews. Get rid of all these Poles. Get rid of all these people, and uh, it'll be a much nicer place. We'll be able to do the things we want. Well, what's it? What's it any different? You got some mom on her back in the delivery room. Well, I don't. You know, I I really want to go to school, and I haven't really. You know, my boyfriend's really not in. You know, let's just leave the child over there until it stops breathing. Somebody tell me the difference. Okay. Um, Too much? Maybe. Uh, Let's go to uh, Roger in Waco. Roger, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Roger? I'm good, Rick. How are you? I'm I'm well, thanks. Good. Hey, uh, I love your show. Thanks for taking my call. I just had a few things to say about the the whole border wall. Uh, Trump has... I believe, played these guys exactly where he wants them. He's held out long enough because he knew that they would give him to him to a percentage. He can use that money to begin building the wall. If they want to take this to court, they can take it to court. They're going to have a hard time defending the fact that they've already released money, and he's going to use that against them. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I hadn't thought about it that way, but you're right. Yeah, I mean, he's got the time to do it, and plus he's working on it. They're not going to build it overnight, so that's going to hold him up a little bit. He's already got his people in place to start building the wall as it is. How can you defend one portion of a wall and say the rest of the country isn't just as important? Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. Um, It's, um, you know, as I look at this, you know, and again, I'm I'm not a shock jock. I'm not one of those guy is falling kind of guys. But if you take into consideration the anti-Semites the Democrats now have in a, a state representatives, uh, the absolute lug nut void of any intellect Cortezes, uh, the Betos, which is for open border. I mean, they don't want borders. It's as simple as that. They don't want any borders. 
um, and because they can keep a new crop of voting blocks coming in. Uh, if you put all that together, and then, as I say, um, walls somehow are immoral and racist. I heard that last night. Walls are racist. How's a wall racist um, and immoral, uh, but murdering uh, a baby is not? I, it's We're at a juncture. We're either going to lose this this once great nation, or we're going to try to reel it back from the brink. My question to you, Roger, is this. Do you think, and be as honest as you can, do you think there are still enough plugged in, informed, connected, true Americans on the left and the right to keep this thing from falling off the edge into socialism? I think there are enough people who have stuck their hand up in the air and took that oath that they would defend this Constitution of the United States. When I got out of the military, I did not take that oath back. I think there's enough people out there, including the ones who haven't done that, to support our president. Man, I hope you are right. Now he's trying an end run around Congress in a desperate attempt to put taxpayers on the hook for it. (laughs) Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Congress will defend Mm -hmm. our constitutional authorities in every way that we can. God, just unbelievable. Now, we're going to put you on the hook for the wall. That's what we're in in his desperate attempt. This guy ought to be an actor. He truly should. He could play the know-nothing villain in some B-movie. I mean, it's it's inc- is it not incredible, or is it just me because I'm so close to it? You know, maybe maybe that's it. It, it could be, I suppose. It, it just I cannot. Be- He's almost worse than Nancy Pelosi. First, it went to the Senate, where Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer praised the bipartisan bill that includes funding for border security. It represents a fair compromise. Then came word that President Trump would sign the bill, but would declare a national emergency at the same time. President Trump couldn't convince Mexico. He couldn't convince the American people. He couldn't convince their elected representatives to pay for his ineffective and and expensive wall. So now he's trying an end run around Congress in a desperate attempt to put taxpayers on the hook for it. Legal challenges are almost certain. Do you think? (laughs) The Democrats, they've got an entire team at the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals ready to file a brief. Ready to file it's it's amazing to me, absolutely amazing. Uh, Josh, Josh is calling from West Texas. Josh, where are you calling from, my friend? I'm about ten miles uh, north of Plainview. Good to I'm have you. To Lubbock. Good to have you. Well, well, Rick, I appreciate you taking my call. Uh, first things first, uh, what you and the whole WBAP family do, do is is really great. You guys really truly are the uh, voice of America. Um, you guys always bring facts and uh history it's real educational um i try with that being said i try to listen to both um the conservative and the liberal side of things sure so every now and then I'll good for you by the way yeah i try to do that because you know you you make your own opinion um and it really it turns out everything that that um the 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 right portrays it at at the the left as as everything that they are i mean there you can't we don't you don't you don't lie about it. It's every every time I listen to him, I listen to him today for about an hour. Um, there's a, it's a station on uh, Sirius XM, and and it was uh, some lady I don't know her name, and she was talking with a gentleman on the phone, and for the entire hour, I kid you not, it was nothing but how Trump is anti-Semitic. He is a, a racist. He supports Nazis. I mean, they didn't bring any facts or anything real to the table for the entire hour, and. There's only so much I can listen to it before I, I start to pull my hair out, and then I, I got to switch back to, to WBAP. But um, that, that, that's just something that, that it, it worries me. At the same time, I'm torn between what I think the president should do as far as this bill is concerned. On one foot, I want him to stand his ground, um, basically do what he said he was going to do about the shutdown, that if we don't get what we, what, what, what we were asking for, then we would shut it down. But on the second foot, I don't, I'm worried that he's going to lose a lot of his base that they're just going to throw their hands up if he signs it and, and just claim that he's giving up on, well, on what may, he said he was going to do. Josh, may I give you a different point of view in that regard? Um, you know, what was his campaign promise? He's going to build a wall. He's going to stop drugs. Yep. Going to stop human trafficking. Going to stop the gangs. He's going to stop it. 
so he's gone about 15, 16 different ways trying to get that done. So if he signs the bill and simultaneously declares an emergency to allocate the rest of the money he needs to build the wall, then, yeah, the Democrats notwithstanding, because they're against any, I mean, you know, they're against uh, his bathroom breaks, for crying out loud. But if he, d- <laughs> if he does that, at least he's fulfilled his campaign promise, hasn't he? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he has. I hope, um, I hope that, there, that a lot of the American people can actually see it that way um, instead of just calling it what the Democrats are going to call it if he signs it, is that they won, they beat him, you know, they, they put him in his place, this, that, and that. And um, that's, I'm really praying that there's a lot of people out there that... Well, they're, they're going to do that. that. They're, 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 make no mistake about it. The Democrats are going to do that. Chuck Schumer's yep. going to be running around like he took a handful of uh, uh, Viagra. He'll be going to the doctor, you know, I've had this thing down here for eight hours. What do I do now? I mean, th- he literally will be doing that. But Trump... Yep. He promised the American people a wall. He promised to secure the sanctity and sovereignty of the country. He promised to keep gangs and bad guys out. So, okay, uh, Nancy Pelosi said not $1 for the wall, so I'll take $1.5 billion. And at the same time, declare a, an emergency, which legally he can do, to allocate money from other sources to finish the wall. And I'll fight you every step of the way in court if I have to, because I'm doing this on behalf of the American people. I mean, we're not a monarchy. You know, one guy doesn't call all the shots, but he, I think he's figured out a way to get this done. And I, I agree. I, I agree with that. That's that, that would be the I would I, I'd hope that he, he can get he can get all that done and, and they don't sit there and get a, a judge that's on their side in court. Um, it's going to be a battle. But I I know I know I'll, I'm, I, I trust whatever the president decides. Um, and I'm, I've always been that way. One other thing before before you let me go on that other show, they always they kept saying over and over that the Trump's base doesn't like and doesn't want immigrants in our country. That's not true. Yeah, that's, and and, that, and, that, and that's that's when I tuned out. That's whenever well, I, I they I, always I shut it off. they always conveniently forget one word: legal. We don't yeah, want yep. illegal immigrants in this country. But the immigrants that made it here legally, they don't want them either. Yep. They forget about that word, but then whenever it comes down to Trump, they, they hold on to this one word they said on that show, too, today, was that Trump changed his rhetoric from build the wall to finish the wall. So they'll hold on to that, but they fail to do it. It's, it's all about their narratives, and it's, it's, it worries me that people are joking about um, um, Alexander Cortez and, and, and all these other um, left-wing nuts. But at the end of the day, they they are potentially real threats because there's a lot of people that support them. No, I, you're right, and we're we're going to get into that a little more. One thing, Josh, and I got to step aside very quickly. I'm up against a news break. Finish the wall. I got no problem with that. He changed that term to let people know. He pulled the curtain back and said, "Hey, other presidents have started a wall. Uh, Democrats." were for barriers, were for walls, until I came along. So instead of build it, we'll just finish it. Uh, I got no problem with that at all, but I'm pretty sure that other show didn't explain it that way. We are reviewing our options, and we have to see what the president will say. Um, this, uh, yeah. uh, I don't believe that the uh, there's any good faith negotiations to have with the uh, Republicans in Congress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Nancy. What is it? Pelosi. I'm Nancy Pelosi. Pop a top again. I've just got time for one more round. Set him up, my friend. There you go. That's Nancy Pelosi's theme song right there. Uh, Mike, Mike, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. Where are you calling from, Mike? Uh, Italy. Italy. All right. How's it going? Uh, Oh, good. And, uh, man, you should have given me a heads up. You were going to play her before the call. Now I'm all, I'm all disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I'm a, I am have to say I'm disappointed in the, the way that this border wall funding has played out because I feel like Trump really is kind of using a little bit of duck and cover for uh, something that he had. It was going to have a hard time getting through uh, Washington. But he did promise it. And he did have majority for two years. But I, I, I primarily place the blame at the feet of the uh, Republican leadership 
I mean, McConnell, he didn't find any cojones. Yep. Uh, he's playing the same old game he always plays. He's coming out and playing big boy, and I'm standing by the president's decision. All that. But he had two years to approve the money, and he slow played it so that he wouldn't have to face it when it was actually possible to pass it the same way they did with Obamacare. Voted over and over again to defund it while Obama was president. Yeah. And then when they have the majority, they can't pass it. See, and see it's just Mike, politics. all they care about is their jobs. Listen to what Mike is saying. You know, I got frustrated the other day, Mike. I get frustrated just like you do. Um, and on my promo, I said, you know, now the president, and you're right, he's using some duck and cover and uh, a declaration of emergency to allocate appropriated funds someplace else. Uh, because you can only get money from the government if it's appropriated, you know, one place or the other. Um, but he made the promise, and he's trying to fulfill the promise. Uh, my biggest problem was, uh, Republicans, I hope you've learned a lesson. The next time, if there is a next time, you've got the majority, the House, the Senate, and the White House, act like you got the majority. Do something on behalf of the American people instead of verbally masturbating with each other about, uh, you know, oh, we're great, we're wonderful, we're in the majority. Uh, that doesn't do me or you any good, Mike. No, and it's, yeah, like I said, it just frustrates me that when they do have the majority, they, then they act like they don't, and they, uh, they find reasons why they can't, you know, pass it then. But then as soon as they don't have a majority and it's impossible to pass a piece of legislation, <laughs> then all of a sudden they're going to come out and play big boy and like they're fighting for the you know conservative values. And all they care about is their jobs. That's it, Mike. That's it. Um, the Republicans could have done this. They didn't because they didn't want, they didn't want uh, illegal immigration to stop, just like the Democrats don't, for different reasons. Uh, but for the most part, uh, that was, they were on the same page. So let's not all sit here like babes in the wood. Oh, the Republicans came around. For... Look, the Republicans could have done this a long time ago. I'm a conservative. I'm not a Republican, but I am a conservative. And if you're in the majority, at least act like you're in the majority. All the, that lip service that every president since, gosh, Reagan has given to establishing a border wall is all it, it was that's all it was lip service until trump came along mike very intuitive call i appreciate it larry in dallas larry thanks for waiting how you doing larry fantastic thank you you bet i guess uh what really got me upset was i think yesterday or the day before some guy named jimmy called in and said if this war don't happen i'm, I'm you know abolishing trump that deal and i think about i mean i was bring tears to my eyes how hard this guy worked and how much he's accomplished and how much he's a patriot. And he is doing everything in his stolen might and power against everyone, Republicans and Democrats. No one liked the guy. You know, the never Trumpers, this, that, and the other. And uh, I just, I can't believe people would give up on, on one thing when he's actually, if you pay attention, he's trying, he's, he's pulling all the strings. And I guarantee you he's got a plan B, C, D, and E, and F. On this wall thing. Yeah, you know, I, Larry, I think you, Larry, you and I would agree. Americans love a fighter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and we love a fighter that's fighting for us. And, yeah, you know, we've been under the impression that, oh, well, the elected leadership in D.C., at some point, uh, at some point, at some time, at some level, they'll do something for us. Trump just walked in, kicked the door off the hinges, and said, I promise the American people this. He's accomplished over 384 separate things, some through legislation, th some through executive uh, order, uh, on behalf of the American people. Do you hear about it? No, because the mainstream media won't tell you. But, I mean, we got us a fighter, man. I'm, I'm willing to keep him in the ring as long as we can. He's the first president I've ever trusted in my life. And I knew <laughs> it. Uh, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, uh, I don't know. The, the Holy don't take this ride wrong, whatever you don't take it. But when he first started running, and I wasn't, I never watched him on TV or nothing like that. But when he started running for president, all of a sudden, I felt the spirit inside me say, he's going to be his best president since Theodore Roosevelt. And uh, I just knew it. Well, one thing I would say as a believer uh, myself, Larry, and I'm no poster boy for Christianity. I jump the rails more times than 
any 10 people, but I know where they are to get back to. Never discount, never discount that small, silent, still voice. Never discount um, what you uh, perceive as a spirit. Never, ever, ever discount that. Um, I don't know if it extends to uh, the president, um, but it, it will serve you well individually. I know that. Uh, good call. I appreciate it. Steve in Argyle. Steve, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Steve? Uh, just fine, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, yes, uh, I've heard, uh, listened to you for a while and appreciate everything you've done. And uh, I know the topic today is tended towards, you know, what's to be done uh, regarding uh, the in- intransigence that we have, you know, on the Democratic side. Um, personally, I think, uh, and it's just my opinion, but I've heard other people echo this opinion. Uh, professors, as a matter of fact, uh, people, you know, that tend to um, know history. And uh, I really think we're at a point in society where there's a rift or a gulf or what have you between uh, value systems, people that think one way and people that think another way. You're right. Uh, and I think the, the people that think uh, the democratic way, the socialist way, are never going to agree with the people that think uh, like most of your callers do. And I don't think there's any room for a compromise, to be honest with you. And as to what is going to be done, I don't know what the answer is, because already the judiciary system, one of the branches, um, you know, I think is politically, which is supposed to be neutral. Yeah, it's not. uh, Is is politically biased. Uh, We can't trust that. we can't trust, you know, the Congress to compromise and to get work done for the country. Instead, most of it's, you know, uh, animosity is just directed towards uh, the president with no interest towards, you know, the rule of law. So to be honest with you, um, what is the solution? Uh, you know, I mean, many people say you're not in a civil war until you're until you already you know, until you're already in it. So. I think, you know, whether it's a bloodless civil war, I mean, I hate to be the harbinger, you know, of uh, negativity, but it really seems like that's where we're approach. Okay. No, I, listen, um, maybe you find this strange for me to say, but I absolutely agree with you in totality. And I'll, I'll tell you why, Steve. Uh, take the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, um, the most overturned court in United States history. Uh, It's way too big, needs to be broken up. Uh, But you're right. There's political bias that runs throughout the judicial. It just just is because, well, human beings are a part of it. Human beings are a flawed species. Uh, They're always going to make mistakes. Um, We were all going, generally speaking, in the same direction in this country. I mean, there were... There were those liberals that, uh, you know, don't tell me what to smoke. I mean, different things like that. But we've gone so far past that. It's like trying to herd cats now. It's impossible. Um, And unfortunately, we have dumbed down at least two, maybe three generations. They don't know about the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. Um, I mean, I've got a man on the street um, you know, of course, it was a you know a, a fake question. Hey, Hillary wants to get rid of the Bill of Rights. Uh, you think we ought to do that since they're so old? Oh yes, I think we ought to. Even not knowing, obviously, that those Bill of Rights were for them: freedom of speech, freedom to worship, freedom to bear arms. Um, they don't get it. Um, ignorance will always bury you. Let me say it again: ignorance will always bury you as surely as a round from an AK-47. It will always bury you eventually. Whether your physical house collapses on top of you um, through, through you know, wrong decisions or what have you, it doesn't matter. Ignorance will always bury you. Um, with the Cortez and the anti-Semites and the Democrats, uh, this is what happens. You know, we left our government alone for so long. It became a self, a self-contained entity, no longer serving us, but serving themselves. So we finally get somebody in office. We came to our senses um, in time to get a non-politician politician in there to work on behalf of the American people. And now he's taking the slings and arrows uh, that were meant for us. When they're you know, railing against Trump, they're really railing against the Americans that uh, basically brought their gravy train to a screeching halt in D.C. That's, uh, that's what this is about. But you're right. You're absolutely on point. At some point, we've got to reel this back in. Um, The adults have to come back home, uh, tell the kids to clean up their mess, and try to come to some semblance of running a once great nation great again.
There's recognition, according to senators and aides, that this is just the first battle of another one to come. There are several Republicans, including high-ranking Republicans, who have been raising significant opposition to the idea of a national emergency. They're opposed to it on constitutional grounds. They're worried about it on president grounds as well. And they're punks. Uh, they're part of the uh, deep state. They're part of the status quo. They're part of the folks that uh, hopefully will go spinning, circling around the drain as the, as the swamp drains. Uh, they're Well, I don't know. Let me go over here. Let me have my three martini lunch with my Democrat friend, and I'll get back with you. You're the problem. You're the problem. Uh, it's, this is not tough to figure out. You've got people on both sides of the aisle. Please don't misunderstand. You have Republicans that lean more toward the left than they do the right. They don't want to upset the status quo. They don't want the gravy train to stop. They don't want any legal file. Well, I don't know if we ought to be uh, filing an emergency. You know, this president will be gone in 2020. And No, sorry, you're a punk. Man up. Do something for the American people instead of yourself. Now, we are working uh, on getting this bill, or at least portions of it, excerpts from it. I don't have it, but this is what I've been told by several people, one of them, Jonathan. The bill has poison pills in it, amnesty for illegals. Uh, local mayors can veto walls built in their area. Um Walls cannot be built on public lands. No extra border patrol agents. He needs to veto. That's according to Jonathan. Jonathan, if what you have put in here is factually accurate, I would have to say I will hope, I will hope he's got a plan. And you don't amass billions of dollars by going, oh, I didn't know that. You don't amass billions of dollars by being a no-nothing politician in D.C., feathering your own political nest. Well, I don't want to make anybody mad. I don't want to be upset. Look, I, I found out a long time ago in talk radio, TV and talk radio. Um, it wouldn't matter if you went on the air, on camera, or on mic, saying, I got free $100 bills for everybody. You're going to piss somebody off. You're going to make somebody mad. As a matter of fact, I just... Uh, where is it? Uh, where is she? I can't... Uh, to give you some kind of idea of how this works. And um, disrespectful. That's that's what it is. Um, this is from Jean. Jean. I won't give her last name. Jean. Do you... Rick, do you really teach your kids to disrespect their elders and their leaders? Well, uh, no, I don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I taught my son, if you want to get slapped across the parking lot, go in uh, ahead of a woman into a restaurant, a place of business. No, my kids have pretty good manners. What about their leaders? No. Uh, question. Certainly question. Don't follow anyone blindly. Never, ever do that. That's how end, uh, people end up in the ditch. Um, you respect your elders, um, but you take a stand if they're leading you down the wrong path. And then she says, you talk like street trash about anyone you disagree with, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Guys, do I look? This is my ashamed of myself look. Is that good? Okay, good. Uh, People like you are destroying and dividing our country. Am I destroying and dividing the country? Is that what I'm doing? I didn't think so. Uh, I'm so glad that the day and time of your kind is slowly but surely coming to an end. You disgust me. Gene, I'm going to be up all night long because of this email. I mean, all night long. I'll probably have to take Advil PM just to get a wink of sleep. Uh, let's go to Terry in Dallas. Terry, thank you for waiting. Hi. Hi, Terry. How you doing? Good. Uh, I wanted to address this uh, late-term abortion thing, if I could. I was on the radio here, I guess, it about 20 minutes ago when you were talking about it. I don't understand where they cut this off. In other words, a baby is born... If he, if they don't spank him on the butt and he's not crying, is he not born? And then because we talk about, well, we make him comfortable over in the corner. No, we no, him up Terry. And we wait, see you, what the mother wants to do. You misunderstand. This is the redefinition of murder by Democrats. Murder's okay as long as you don't call it murder. You call it 
women's health care. Hey, um, yeah, we uh, we were just called uh, to investigate. Was there a murder here? Uh, no, no, officer. Uh, it, it was we were just exercising women's health care, uh, her choice in women's. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Bye bye now. Yeah, it's uh, Demi- I called Democrats baby killers the other day. A few people took exception. Well, what is it? If it's not that, what is it? All right, God's blessings on each and every one of you and Gene. Um, Even though we disagree, that's always my priority. I'll be back tomorrow at 2. I'm Rick Roberts. Stick around. Mark Levin's next on News Talk 820 WBAP.